I'm Tucker Mulch. We're here with uh, Paul Giganti of uh, TD Ameritrade. Uh, we had just uh, we had just been talking about um, uh, order flow and uh, the fact that when a when a person uh, makes an order on their computer, uh, it's tagged with a with a unique ID, and from then on throughout the process that that unique ID flows with it. And uh, once a trade is executed, uh, it comes back via two paths to the uh, initiating broker, and uh, they're able to keep track of, uh, uh, of of which orders were actually executed. And uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna branch now to to uh, learn about what Paul knows about uh, some of the um, how things can go wrong sometimes. So uh, uh, not too long ago, uh, uh, as as of uh, when we're making this recording, um, there was a uh, uh, an issue with the Facebook uh, initial public offering. Uh, now before we dig into that, uh, I wanted to cover a similar process, which is uh, uh, most exchanges um, in the morning uh, before the market opens, they have what's called an opening cross where they set the initial uh, you know, opening price for a stock. Um, and uh, I was wondering if you could tell us how, how that happens. Um, the New York over the years that New York has changed to be a little more like NASDAQ. NASDAQ has a free-flowing book where orders come in, they match up, and at the last second where they all happen to match and most of them match without a movement afterwards will match up and that's the opening print. Um, in New York used to pause it, and I'm not certain that they still do, pause it for a few seconds and uh, give the specialist actually human intervention in order to uh, put those prices together at the best price. And the specialist would fill in any small pieces that aren't um, accounted for. So there's, uh, um, before the open, there's uh, um, uh, buy orders and sell orders. And these are all limit orders, right? Uh, no, you can put a market order in the buy or sell in the opening. Um, OK. And, and, and uh, so you've got a whole um, spectrum of buy limit orders, a whole spectrum of, of sell limit orders. How is that initial price uh, determined? Well, you look to see where they best match up, where the where you know the lowest. So you have to pick one price. Pick one price, and if you think about how they all flow in, you, the, you you'll have the market orders. You'll put those all against each other, and then you have the limits, and where they stop matching up is really the fair price. Mm -hmm. Now, do the market order, orders get executed then at uh, at the, the price? Opening it's, price. It's, it's the same price that everybody for the yes. limit orders. Okay. Okay. Now, what happens if you're uh, if your order isn't executed uh, at the open, a market order has to be executed on the opening. Oh right, right. It's there okay. beforehand. Well, there might not be enough. Um... Well, then, then you'll find a price where the limit orders will match up with the oh, market with the orders. market orders. I see. And okay. create that market there, and that's where the New York Stock Exchange would have the specialist fill in, if the, if it's something dramatically different. So that um, this, by the specialist fill in, you mean that uh, they'll, they'll they'll make buy or sell as necessary to make the. Close fair up. and orderly market. I see. Interesting. Now it seems like sometimes that could entail a lot of risk if uh, it, it does. If everybody wants to sell. Right? Well, if everybody wants to sell, then the then the, oh, the price, price will be much lower <laughs> until we until they find a place that it isn't. Interesting. Okay. Now the reason uh, we, I went through that process is um, uh, it's a similar process to uh, when there's an IPO, an, an initial public offering, which means a company's uh, stock is first coming out in the market. Um, on the day of an IPO, it's not. You, it doesn't usually happen at the open. It happens uh, later in the day, but they use the same matching uh, process, right? Yeah. Now, what went wrong with uh, with Facebook? Uh, Facebook, from you know what I've read in the press, and I have no firsthand knowledge, uh, was just an overwhelming, uh, overwhelming uh, demand to get in and out of that book at the last moment, right, right. and really just blew up the servers. Um, uh, and uh, another. Um, uh, another recent similar, uh, uh, I don't know, I don't want to call computer it. Computer glitch. Computer glitch <laughs> <laughs> was uh, an issue with, uh, with uh, Knight. So what, uh, what Knight, Knight's there? was very interesting. Um, the, the back story is there is a new program going on at the, uh, at the New York Stock Exchange retail liquidity program. Um, not necessarily for the story, but... Uh, knowing that new code had to be written to be put into the, uh, the computers for August 1st. Mm -hmm. So on July, normally they wouldn't do a systems change in the middle of the week. This was in the middle of the week. 
for this new program, a new order type basically, they're going into the mm. New York Stock Exchange, uh, mandatory. And I had written a comment letter, this is the sad part, that they didn't want to do this because they didn't like the program. Mm. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately what happened was um, when they put in the new code, it was uh, lined up, it was down, it was put in seven of their eight servers. One of the servers didn't have the new code. Mm. But mm -hmm. what was in, pl in that spot while looking at the code was uh, old code mm -hmm. that uh, did something with the orders when they got into that box. So it was only a certain part of the alphabet that um, they didn't get anything back from the marketplace. So it became an infinite loop of these orders, sending very small orders, so it didn't, so didn't really show up immediately enough. But, but they, weren't, they weren't getting that, uh, that they weren't separate getting channel a, they um, were, closing. They weren't getting a separate channel feedback that something that they were making this trade. It was really being uh, shot off into outer space. Mm -hmm. So this one nothing other, happened, so they figured it didn't happen, so they issued another order. Yes, box seven of eight was looking for the order to come back. Somehow that order wasn't coming back. It was using old code. Old code not going someplace turned into tens of thousands of mm. hundred share orders in these certain stocks, mm. driving up the price of some, driving down the price of others with no, no governor on it. It was obvious to the market participants that something was going on mm. pretty mm. quickly. Knight went server by server trying to figure out what the problem mm. was because mm. they could tell that they were, there was something wrong, but they didn't know to what extent. It was about a million, it was about um, $10 million a minute Mm. It cost mm. them, and uh, 40 minutes later, they uh, wow. they so turned off the right server. Wow. Uh, it was it was unfortunate that it was seven out of eight. <laughs> if it was <laughs> server one, they would have would have uh, only been a 10 million dollar error. Oh my gosh! It's just the last one they got to. Yeah. Wow. So uh, what um, what's the lesson learned from there? I mean, how could how could Knight have have uh, have pre prevented that? Um, well, you know, there's quite a, quite a process of QA uh, before ever putting code into production. There was a, a round table at the SEC that spent six hours talking about this. Mm. Um, really, it, it comes down to there's going to always be errors in code. Uh, the, it's just how, if you build something to stop it after the error has happened. Uh, so it's so a code that detects sanity checker that'll pull a the A little bit of a sanity check. But it was, this was a, almost a comedy of errors, if, if you could say. Uh, small orders on the opening, several stocks. Um, Which uh, letters of the alphabet was it, by the way? You know, I don't, <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head. I remember uh, some, in, my, in my trading history, uh, when I was at a hedge fund, uh, we, we noticed one day that uh, we were only trading stocks, uh, uh, you know, uh, M through Z. And uh, <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, and it, it, it turned out that our um, our data provider uh, hadn't given us the A through L uh, <laughs> data in the morning. So, uh, anyways, I totally know how that kind of stuff happens. Uh, okay, we're with uh, Paul Giganti at uh, TD Ameritrade. Uh, thanks very much, Paul. Thank really you. Appreciate it.